my name is Stroda, and I have a, an amazing guest. This gentleman has so much knowledge and wisdom. His name is Mr. Deshaun Jackson. Now, he's not just a coach, a life coach or a lifestyle coach. He's an RN. He's also um, a physical therapist. An asshole. Assistant. Assistant. Okay. Physical therapy assistant. And get this. He actually has put some of this stuff into practice, not just to for himself, but to help people live a full life because your physical health affect every aspect of your life. And he's here to share his knowledge, his wisdom, and then to encourage us to incorporate this in our lives because it's not just about looking good, but it's about the overall health. I'm excited. So please take it away. Tell us more sure. about what you do. Sir, sure, I want to thank you for having me on and your listeners for taking time out of their day to tune in. Uh, my name is Deshaun Jackson. I have started the Psych RN Fit and I'm a lifestyle coach. I'm transitioning from currently a nurse psych specializing in psychiatric, working with patients, youth, adults, and uh, in a mental health program. And I'm using that knowledge and background and my physical therapy assistant to shift into lifestyle coaching. So yeah. it's that background of career personal life experiences, which we'll get into, that have helped shape this and push this goal forward. Good. One of the things that came in mind when you were speaking is this. How in the world did you decide to take your knowledge, transition, and make this accessible to everybody? I am curious to know how you did this. To combine that story into a short segment, um, I took the highs I was experiencing in education and my career combined with the personal struggles I was going through in three marriages and now going through three divorces and raising children. All this combined has helped shift my perspective um, and taking having to fight through uh, going through the University of Michigan nursing program during COVID as the only African-American male at the time during that program, these these struggles all helped shape that dynamic. So I, it's all encompassing. I, I wish I could tie it in, but that those are little things that help shape completely and push this. That's <clears> amazing. <throat> um, you chose a very trying time to go into the nursing. Everybody at that time, from what we knew at that time, people were running the other way. You were running towards it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the, the short, <laughs> I was a physical therapy assistant at the time, and they had shut down. Uh, there was no surgeries. Doctors weren't doing surgery. I didn't have patients to see. Um, uh, to add to that, my godmother was going through her end of life. I had a uh, point in my PTA career where there was another colleague who I worked with who basically told me, Deshaun, you need to stay in your lane. And when I was working with them, and I took that personally and decided to use all these factors to shift into nursing during COVID because I wanted more. I wanted to do more. And I didn't want people to tell me what I could and couldn't do. I wanted to prove things to my family and to myself. And all these dynamics were coming into play. I love that. The strangest thing is, when you embark on a dream or a vision, those that are close to you and around you never see it. No. So they tend to project the limitation that they see for themselves onto you. Did you notice that was happening at the time when you felt this intense need to go forward. I can say that you have just nailed that my hardest struggle and battle throughout my last 10 years has been those closest to me giving the opposition. Um, I can deal with it when it's a stranger, people I don't know, that, that's fine, but it's when the people who are close in your inner circle, that is the hardest to push through and deal with. Because I find in those situations, your inner talk has to be even more savage because the people you rely on to fill you aren't there putting it into your cup. <clears throat> so that required me to step it up personally. Yes, yes. 
And that's the most important thing because when your cup is being filled by you and each time you hear that negativity, you can't. Who do you think you are? What are you doing? You're too old to start all over again. And who, you know, you've gone through all this stuff already. What is wrong with you? Why can't you just settle? Why can't you just sit still and focus on what you're doing and just do what you got to do? And usually when you hear that, what is the mental record that's playing when you're hearing that? Let me add one else in there too before I answer that. The self-love. You're nobody loves you. You don't and you don't love yourself enough. That's a, a very cru crucial one to throw in there. For yeah. me, my inner voice sounds like a military Marine Corps drill instructor. There's mm. been no time in life I've been able to baby my oh come on, Deshaun. You can do it. Oh, come on. It works for nobody. You cannot placate people into their position. You have to have inner self-talk that is, it has to be insurmountable to the opposition that you're dealing with. You have to be able to have, there's no stronger validation than self-validation. So I had to learn during those times when people I knew, people I didn't know, I can use my nursing example. I, again, I talked about people in my inner circle, but going through nursing school, I failed twice, two, two times that pushed me back one year. And there were times people looked at me and said, Deshaun, I don't know if you're cut out for this. Uh, Deshaun, you failed this program, failed the class. I don't know if you're going to make it through the program. And my inner self-talk had to be savage because if that, at any time during that process, if I quit, I'm not, I don't know if I'm talking to you today. I don't know if I've continued on to anything else. So it's, it's crucial. It is crucial. And I so agree with you because these are the words that become your reality. And I love the way you put it, your inner savage. Mm -hmm. Because those who are speaking the doubts into you, they don't realize what they're doing is actually savage. Because I'm not blaming them. They're only seeing what they see. But they come with that perception to cut you down. Because if you're going to be pushing beyond that perception of what they hold of you, that means they would have to do a little mental adjustment. Yes. To accept you as you are evolving and majority of the people we know and love in our circles seems to limit themselves and literally tell themselves, I cannot do that mental adjustment to grow with you. So at this point, I'm going to try it the best that I can to cut you down because I do not want to grow. I do not want to evolve with you. And when this happens, I recall for myself when this happened, it just made me sad. When I would try my hardest and you name it, stay in your lane, like you said, what's wrong with you? Just live within your means, accept as it is. Nobody has done this or others have done it already. Mm -hmm. So why do you think yours is gonna be any better? Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I hear that, internally I said, <laughs> I'll show you oh, oh yeah, who I am. Mm -hmm. Because who you're describing is not who I am. And I remember I was 13 years old and a, a lady, um, I, I went to, to her house for some reason and she said, Stroda, Everybody has an opinion of who you should be and who you are. But I want you to decide who that is. And then you show them and tell them who you are. Society has diluted that message so much that people don't get it. They've lost it. And they lose. They, 
we've sought so much outside validation. We don't know what to do when we don't get it from other people or other things outside of us. We completely break down because we have not proved it to self what it takes to to show that but when we're in those oppositional struggles, whatever it may be, because we all go through them, I'm going to make it. I'm going to go through it. First, you have to, people think that they have to feel it first. They have to believe it. That's not how it works. You <laughs> say it, you do it, then you believe it. The belief yes. comes after. People have them steps mixed up. They got them in the wrong order. Yes. <clears throat> yes. I completely mm -hmm. agree. Because um, I had someone tell me a long time ago, well, if I just think about it, isn't that the same as doing it? And I was like, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, no, you have to physically, it's a, it's an action. You have to yes. put an yes. act to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought if I just think about it, mm -hmm. I can't feel good about it. So it's not the same. Answer. No, yeah. you have to see yourself physically doing it. Yes. And then do it. And <laughs> over. then do it. Because over. when you do it. The feeling is alive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because that feeling is alive. Even when you're reminiscing about it, that feeling comes back because you feel it in all of your being. You've solidified it to your subconscious. Your subconscious knows you. It knows if you say one time, I'm going to lose weight but then you don't follow through with the action. It just, there's nothing, I, I know they're gonna go right back to their normal habits, but if yes. it sees you put in a pattern, let's say 90, you put, in number, but you put in a pattern, it thinks, okay, now they're doing this habitually constructing, I have to follow suit. Yes, <clears throat> yes, and that is the key. So I applaud you for moving against the grain because you notice everyone around you wanting you to stay in the limited self that they perceive and thought, you can't do that. But then you said, uh-huh, okay. I know what I have to do in my head. I know what I have to say to myself to move forward. Even though you may not have all the answers, you just knew you had to move. So whilst you started moving, and I applaud you, for your vulnerability to being honest that, yeah, I took the test twice before I got it. And the first time, everybody said, maybe you're not cut out for this. You have no idea how many people quit after the first try. After the first try, they quit. But here's the thing. If everybody took that route, nothing would get be done. Nothing but yes. So I appreciate you for being vulnerable to speak your truth and live your truth and do your truth. Now, whilst you were writing and studying and moving along, what was the one thing that you felt was steering you on? It evolved over time. So as the PTA, the nursing, I knew I had a drive. And for a while, that drive was telling me to push through education and career. But I didn't realize I was missing something. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until going through this last divorce that I realized, Deshaun, you don't need another career. You could I'd go back to school. I've already proved it that I could do that. I was new at something. It, 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 and then it hit me with the personal brand, the lifestyle coaching. You needed something to work internal, Deshaun. So far, you had been searching for the career, the drive, external to fill. But all of a sudden, you knew more hours at work wasn't going to satisfy you. Mm -hmm. So I had to truly find the internal with this one. And that's where this developed. So now, when I turn into pain, I turn towards the internal, which is this lifestyle coaching versus uh, just put some more hours into work into somebody else to pay you more. There, it, mm -hmm. it, it was epiphany for me. <laughs> oh, wow. That level of epiphany. Did you start wondering, I can't believe it took me this long? 
during every divorce, I can't tell you the emotional pain. It would be like crying curled up in the fetal position on the floor. It was this last one that I'm currently going through that I've done that the least because I realized during those painful moments, you now have a daily process, Deshaun. You don't just go to work and try to extend your hours per day while you're still crying all hours of it. You now turn to the work and establish a brand, working on helping people in different facets, different ways. You now have a process daily, waking up at 3 a.m., habitual construction of the man that you need to be to take care of you. Um, so it's it's been, that's the sauce. That is the key. I think people are missing so many times when we hit that floor, we don't turn internal to take us, to pick us up. You fell, you can pick yourself up. You yes. have the ability. Yes. And I completely agree because I feel the adversities we go through, we have a choice. Either take it and make it a catalyst to move forward and see what beauty can come from that. Or we can choose to let that debilitate us and define who we become. Majority, I've seen it time and time again where people are so hurt and almost broken. Mm -hmm. And then the bitterness sets in. Resentment, anger, yeah. uh, boredom. They just, yeah, yes. Suicidal ideation, um, yes. yes. Everything uh, is crushing. a perfect example to go with what you're saying, Christopher. So we all experience death in life. Every one of us. That is a fact and a given. And I'm going to yes. use far-reaching examples, rudimentary. That death can either, hey, have you um, fetal in position, crying from the pain of the loss of the individual, or it can fuel you to push you, to motivate you to do whatever you want to. It, it's not the death that we struggle with. It's the perception that we attach to the event. It's yeah. it, That's anybody. Some yeah. people perceive it one way. Some people perceive it the other way. It's not the mm -hmm. event. It's the perception mm -hmm. that you attach to it because then that follows the emotional trigger, the actions and shapes your, your behavior after that. Yes, yes. And I'll be... Um, I'll give you this uh, with a self-disclosure. When I went through my divorce, it surprised me how many people were asking me, are you okay? And I kept saying, yes, this was long coming. I had been doing the internal work for a long time before it came. So... Others were like, how could you be okay? And I said, because I came to a place of acceptance mm -hmm. and recognizing that, did I turn every stone? And when I recognized, yes, I did turn every stone. That's why the relationship lasted so long because I was busy turning up every stone to see which stone had the key for making it work. And so I learned how to absorb myself into the healing work, which was tough. Absolutely. It's extremely difficult. But I kept telling myself, giving up is not an option. Because if I do, I'm letting everybody down, including myself. And that is a betrayal of my own spirit. And when I said that, I recognized that there was a shift that came. It doesn't matter whether you have the answer or not. Keep moving. So what I tend to say is when I have that negative thought and or emotion, if it happens to everybody, Deshaun, what does it serve you to sit with this? If this, mm. was, um, if this was poison, what would it serve you to sit and hold this onto this, to drink it even? So yes. I know you're feeling it, but you need to get out of it because sitting with it serves you no purpose. And I even, that's no. funny how I, it was a 360 revelation because I had been asking patients at work, I had been asking them the question, um, okay, so I know you're struggling with these emotions, 
Treat it like a restaurant. If you're depressed right now, tell me how you would recommend depression to somebody else to go to that restaurant and try it because it's so good for them. Oh, and, and say that word. That's one. That, <laughs> Or suicidal, I have some patients that struggle with it, and I would ask them, I know you are struggling with this, but ask yourself, if this was a restaurant, would you recommend it to somebody else to go to try? Mm. Would you tell people in your inner circle, try this, this benefits? And they know it, They really, it, it hits them, but they realize it. So yes, that's that's how I have to ask myself, Sean, I get it, it's yeah. a struggle, but what does it yeah. benefit you? I love that, what does it benefit you? And the same thing, you know, the guilt, mm -hmm. the guilt. And you start worrying about, oh, well, if I had done. And I always ask that question. What is it serving? What is the payoff? What is the benefits of these questions? And the ego will come up with some silly answers. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> The ego comes up with some silly answers and then you're like, and I, I guess I'm the type of person that I'm always analyzing myself and asking questions. So usually I'm like, is that really what you think? Then I'm like, okay, no, that's not what I really think. But for a short seconds, it felt like, hmm, maybe. And it's almost a way of absorbing yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I a, go ahead. So I was going to say, I had a patient come in one time and they said they were struggling with uh, internal self-doubt and feelings too. And they said the way they tried to refocus it was, what if somebody close to them in inner circle came to them and said, you know, I'm feeling depressed today. I don't know what to do. I think I just want to isolate. They said, if I really care about them, I would try to do something or help or talk to them or just listen. You, you know, I wouldn't just tell them, sit in it, do nothing, continue mm. to be. And, and it was, it was mind blowing that yes, I understand I struggle, but I know if it was somebody else next to me, I wouldn't encourage them to feel that way. Mm. I would try to. So I, I said, we have to apply that same mindset to ourselves. Absolutely. Yes. And I agree. And it's about recognizing the fact that would I want to be in that? Yes. yes. You know, that level of kindness not just to mm -hmm. self, but to others too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are more kinder to the stranger than we are to ourselves. Absolutely. And it's so sad how much we beat ourselves with these negative thoughts. Now that you've come to this place of recognizing that, oh, this is what the healing journey is. Hmm. And staying on this healing journey what are some of the payoff that you're getting out of this healing, healing journey? Um, I would say the first one is I'm stepping out into growth, which is new and uncomfortable. And I'm embracing that. To yes. be factual, I signed up for the Mammoth Michigan. It's a march here uh, in the Detroit area where it's a 20 mile hike over eight hours. I've never done it before. This was pushed Ooh. and prompted because of what I'm going through. I need growth. I need to push to Sean. Um, mm -hmm. Starting the personal brand. I'm stepping out on faith, listening to the inner call. I've never done this before. I'm learning twists and turns, taking a few falls and bumps and growth, how it happens. This, so it's, I have said that for the next short term goal, six months, I want to spend not just professionally, personally, socially, every aspect of my life in uncomfortable growth. Yes, because we are never, ever going to grow if we are comfortable. Absolutely. Comfort is a trap. Yes, it is. It's a trap to prevent you from seeing where can I improve? Where can I grow? And if I'm growing, what it took. And there's nobody in here, in this planet of ours, that would say, oh, I was comfortable and I loved it. We wrestle with this. <laughs> but we recognize something beautiful is going to be birthed through this. One of the best quotes I've heard recently is the uh, coach of the Phoenix Suns. Uh, they were struggling through the playoffs. And he said, mm -hmm. "One, everything you want in life is on the other side of hard. Yes. 
<laughs> and most people, when they say it's hard, that's when they stop. You need to rephrase how you look at it. When it when it's hard, that's where you need to be. That's where it's at. You're in the sauce. Yes. You won't believe the confidence you need until you push yourself out of it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And that is a beauty because if everything was just wonderful, you had everything you needed and everything is perfect. It would ruin most of us. Yes, we wouldn't know what to do with it. We, we wouldn't. wouldn't know what to do with it. We yeah. appreciate it because we've been through the struggle. We've been through the pain. That breeds appreciation. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is one thing that I am glad I get to experience life in its own mess. Gratitude. Yes. And yes. You don't even get me on gratitude. <laughs> I didn't even bring my gratitude journal. Every day, daily, I make point. I make it a point to write three to five gratitudes a day, and some of them could be as silly and simple as "Thank you for the sunrise." The sun. I could see the sun rays in my bedroom. Thank you. I am here to appreciate it. Thank you. And the other day I was like, thank you. All my needs are met. However way they come, I trust they'll be met. So yes, thank you. I am grateful. And it's powerful because I always say that gratitude and depression cannot exist in the same space. Yes. Because depression is about what I don't have. What I wish I had, and I wish things were right. I can expand that. Have you ever seen anybody run a marathon? Yes. Are they depressed? <laughs> Are they depressed? Nobody nope. is, nobody is swim, swim, no, no, no. In those moments, they are in flow state. That is the exact opposite of those negative feelings. So there's other ways through gratitude, through physical action. And I'm going to add another one to your gratitude list. I've now even started to say during daily struggles, life happens where I, maybe I don't get my way. I'm grateful for not getting my way today. Mm. I'm grateful for that opposition because I know sometimes not getting my way is the benefit. It, yeah. and a closed door can can be a benefit too. So I've had it's a bit of mind shift, but I've had yeah. to add that to my thank you. You know, I run, I wanted it. It didn't work out my way the way I thought. I appreciate. I, I'm still grateful. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And it's a great lesson because mm. a lot of time we want things to happen the way we want it. And yes. I have a a friend that always says, "I don't like surprises." And I said, like, "Well, why?" And she said. Because then I don't know what's going to happen. I said, that is the beauty of it, though. That's the, yes. And she said, no, then it throws my thing, you know, everything off. The way I want things to be is the way I want it to be. I want to make sure that I know what is happening, when it's happening, and all that. And I said, so if you know all that, then what? Said, so then I'll, 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 feel safe. I'll feel safe. And I said, what's safe? Yeah, there's no. Well, then I, hmm. and I was like, Learn to roll with it because that's what makes it fun. And she said, well, it's easy for you to say. I don't even know how you could do that. And I said, well, try to. And when she plans things and the things don't go according to her plan, she says, you know, 12 o'clock, I want to do, be doing this. And you're hoping the person that you're going to call to do that has all the time in the world to be waiting Right. To make sure things, and I'm like, right. life doesn't work that way. That, that person also has things going on. Where that twelve o'clock that you wanted to do the things that you wanted to do, chances are something happened. And but then it ruins my whole day because I had planned to do this, and I was like, oh my. It might serve you to just decide it is what it is. I, sometimes I will have clients. Um, actually, a few. A few weeks ago, we had a power outage. We had a rain and something went on power outage in the whole neighborhood. An hour before the power outage happened, I kid you not, I cannot make this up. One client called me and said, oh, they were canceling and they wanted to reschedule for another day. And I said, okay. Then another one canceled. They were at the doctor's office 
and they won't be out in time. And I said, okay. The third one said they were stuck at work. So they won't be able to have that session that day. So can we do it the next day after seven, uh, um, after 6 p.m.? And I said, yes, you can have the 7 p.m. And then the power went out. So then my friends and everybody said, oh, my goodness, how are you going to be able to work? Because they said the power won't be on until the next day at 3. And I said, well, I'll be darned. Everyone that needed to be seen today, after the, the power outage, they literally canceled or rescheduled. And the hours that I would, the people I would have had during the time that they would have been fixing the power, mm -hmm. until three, I had nobody. The first clients I would have had that day was going to be at 4 p.m. So I told one of my friends, they were like, wow, mm. that's amazing. And I said, I wasn't even upset. I was like, hmm, I guess God, creator, alignment, decided to stay. I know what's coming. So I wasn't offended. And I still saw my client at a time that it was convenient and safe. So then another one said, I wish my days would be arranged like that and it will favor me. And I said, trust, if you can do that, it's amazing. And that's how I live my life. When it's not going right, I'm like, mm, there must be some kind of reason. I'm not sure why, but it's, it must be some kind of reason. I don't get offended and that's the bending. And then one of my friends was saying to her five-year-old son, and she said, do you want to be like a, how about you become like a palm tree and just move with everything? Do you want to be a, a hard, tough tree that just break? And the little guy understood that. And I thought, what a great analogy to give to a child to describe life's ups and downs for a child at five years old, this child is going to be an amazing person when they get older because they would have been practicing this concept from a really early age. I love it. So the detours you took were unconventional. But the beautiful thing is, is Deshaun's way, the unique way. And now that you're planning for your marathon, what are some of the push you give to yourself when you, you get up in the morning the way you really don't want to get up? So for me, the wake up time at 3 a.m. is non-negotiable. I have to start off uncomfortable to the point where, in fact, I've told myself if 3 a.m. gets comfortable, you got to push it up five minutes. You have to keep yourself slightly uncomfortable. So you start your day now with positive affirmations, incantations, projections forward, thinking about the future, writing it down. So not necessarily, I want a million dollar house in Sarasota. I want the <laughs> process. I want the man that has to work through the process to get the house in Sarasota. It's not the house. I need the man who gets through the process. Um, I we need to establish that we have a growing people around us that are all helping each other to get better. Not yeah. the number of people, the man who goes through the process, because I know if I can get him, he he'll do, he'll do anything. Um, yeah. I have this way that I talk about myself. Um, I see myself in the future running down the street. And as today, Deshaun wakes up, he sees him just crest over the street and he's going over the railroad tracks. And by the time today I have to run up to catch to him, tomorrow's Deshaun's just turned the corner. And I only get a glimpse, just enough to know where he's at. By the mm -hmm. time I get to the intersection, I know he went left, but I can't quite see him. So I got to 
Every day requires I have to get up and chase, go to work, still after work. You, you have a full-time yeah. job in this lifestyle. Now uh, go to the gym, work with people, clients, trying to help people. Uh, stepping outside of my current situation, as painful yeah. as it is, that I can still focus on other people. This daily yes. process is what saved me. It's what picked me up off the floor. I love it. I love it. Because that is the the key. Um, because mental health, people think, oh, it's just going to therapy and just talking and getting your stuff out or venting and all that. It's holistic. You have to add everything. You have to be able to move. You have to be able to do the self-talk. You have to be able to do the affirmations. You have to be able to do the gratitude, the meditations. Those who pray, they will have to add that. Those who, whatever they do, this mantra or whatever. You have no matter to what add. guide you pray to. Yes. Yep. Yep. Because you cannot sit and just say, oh, yeah, let me just go and talk and that's it. It has to be everything. Because you'll it's for never, the whole being. You'll never think positive, think your way out of a negative situation. It does not work like that. No. <laughs> and one thing for sure. Your plan to build you. From the inside out. It's a very special one. What do you think a person needs to do to ready themselves mentally to know that they can do that? One, they have to step up and I think it's two parts actually. You have to step up and confront your self limiting beliefs that you have and realize what you're saying is a deceptive lie from your brain. The, what comes out of your mouth is an excuse. And you can come up with as many of them as your lie brain can, it can feed you whatever to, you want to believe. And one of them, you're going to latch on to. So that's step one. You have to recognize that and realize you're going to do what it takes to get out of it. Two, you have to start loving yourself. Mm. Believing, uh, self-confidence, it is all essential. Um, I, from day one, you have to believe that you have it. And then again, action proves and builds self-confidence yes. and we take the steps through. So self-learning beliefs, confidence, self-love. Yes, I love that. Yes, self-love is such a crucial thing for all of us because if we don't have that, we will sabotage ourselves at every stage and every angle. Mm -hmm. I've seen patients, um, one of the examples I give is I've had patients, specifically the adults, that both have depression, one with very high self-esteem and one with very low self-esteem. I say really in essence, the only difference I see between these patients is the high self-esteem patient with depression shuts the door that much quicker. They do not let the voices and the negative self, they still have it, but they shut the door a lot quicker and process through. The ones with low self-esteem and depression struggle with that negative cycle over and over and over again. <clears throat> and it's so painful to watch uh, patients and clients go through that because you can see how their limited be beliefs is creating a stumbling block for them. And seeing and then, that, go ahead. I was going to say was sometimes they're imaginary evils that haven't even manifested yet haven't even manifested that we will make up in, much less the ones that we are real. We will manifest ones. Yes. And that's uh, the sad truth. We do. And for lack of a better word, we become our own enemy. Yes. You know, um, in the words of uh, Nigerians say that more than the Ghanaians, but the Ghanaians say it too. They do things to get themselves into this trouble and this, and the saying that I'm saying, I'm gonna talk about is, my, en my, en my enemies are at work against me. <laughs> that enemy is actually yourself. Uh, right, yeah, <laughs> 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 
Anytime something is going wrong, they said, oh, oh, my enemies have planned against me. And then you, you go through like, well, you said you were going to do this. You, you chose to do this. And then you got the result. Now you're mad. And then blaming, no, look at self. Yes, first, always. Because chances are the answer is right in front of you. Mm-hmm. One of the things... I would love for you to discuss more is how fitness or workout begin to shape that drive within an individual. Uh, So for me, it is a crucial component of beginning to work on yourself. Self-love is uh, I don't believe anybody has ever looked at themselves in the mirror overweight um, when they let themselves go and said they feel good about themselves. I Mm. believe the true reality is we might find a way to negotiate in our brain how we'll accept it, but not that we enjoy it. Um, And also not just not just in aesthetics. Working out is because you are working out those negative feelings. You are working out. You are releasing. It's not just a mind state. We know it to be physiological. You are releasing serotonin and dopamine into the brain. I do not make a major decision in life without working out first because I know I get a release of serotonin and dopamine over two to three hours. And I know I'll perceive the event Mm -hmm. or whatever I'm going through differently than I will prior to. So we know it's not just a mindset and aesthetic, but physiologically, the impact of working out and what it does for you to you is is, is paramount. Yes, I completely agree. Um, now, I don't get up at three. If I get up at three, usually it's because I, I, I have my 3 a.m. a.m. prayer. But uh, you might catch me at 5.30 or maybe 6.30. Sometimes I push it till 7.30. But lately, I, I know I've been stuck in 7.30. <clears throat> and then when I get up, it almost feels like my body's itchy. It feels itchy that I have to work out. So I would, um, right now, the weather is really uh, hot. So what I do is I work out indoors. But when it was a little more cooler, I would get up and walk in the neighborhood and then I would sprint to the garage door and then do some stretching or some whatever. Then I go back again and walk around. Then I see the garage Then I sprint again and I keep doing this at least six times. I like it. So when I do that, I, I love the sweat. I know people might think, ew, to me, <laughs> I do too. <laughs> it's very exciting because that tells me I burned fat, and it tells me that I got rid of stress. Because I'm not sure where I heard it, but when we sleep, our brain releases stress into our system. Ah, okay, okay. So that's why it's important for us to work out in the morning because release that stress when we sleep the stress gets released into our bloodstream the brain doesn't want to keep it because it's not safe so when we work it out and sweat it it helps release that stress and get it up get it out of our system and that's why cortisol doesn't like workout because it likes to sit and allow you to eat the Greasy foods. I like that. I like that. Yeah, the salt, mm. the sugar, all the things that you're not supposed to eat. Cortisol will crave it and want you to eat that because the strange thing is the body, when the body has cortisol, it wants to feel good. So literally, I I look at it this way, that the body wants to feel good. It wants the dopamine because the dopamine allows it to think better. But it takes you through the short-term negative, eating fatty foods, sitting in your depressive state versus the long-term, what's going to feel better for you, going out and exercising, eating macronutrition in health. Absolutely. I can tie that to you. Oh, that's beautiful. I like that. So... 
for me, that's why the workout is, especially in the morning, is important to me because the cortisol is, doesn't help. I like that. It's just quarter. I, I tell all my clients, your stress hormones will hurt you. I can inadvertently tie that to you without knowing it's the, so every morning patients come into my facility and they have to fill out a sheet about what their depression is, what their anxiety is, do they take their medication, how do they sleep, and I can now quantify with what you just said that if they haven't worked out and we've talked about this, they'll absolutely talk about how their morning, in fact, the way they say it is, when I wake up, I feel like my anxiety, my depression is on me. So I ask them, well, what have you done since you woke up to put yourself in a better mood? If you haven't done anything to get rid of that cortisol, then <laughs> yep. yeah, I, so I like how, oh, that's deep. That's cortisol deep. Like that. is, 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 is uh, that is the enemy because yeah. it'll keep that craving and and every time I tell clients, they're like, oh my gosh, I will, I feel like you're looking into my pant my pantry. And I was like, mm. I'm telling you, cortisol will do that to you. Mm. And mm. I know this for a fact. When <clears throat> I didn't feel like working out, during the times that I was like, I don't want to work out. And then doing those things for myself because I've got too much going on where I'm my mind is preoccupied, especially when the divorce was going on, preoccupied with so many things. I just, I was so focused on trying to get all those things done. I felt like I didn't have time for the, for the workout. And then I realized that the foods that I was eating was not healthy. Fair enough. They were not, um, I don't buy processed foods. Mm -hmm. You won't find it in my house, but the one thing, this is bad, but Ghanaians, Nigerians, don't come for me. But the African bread, <clears throat> the African, the Ghanaian, and the Nigerian sweet bread. Ooh, I was buying that and just eating that and then drinking tea. That was what I was living on. And the comfort. I, yeah, the yeah. Comfort. Comfort. It wasn't I wasn't craving anything else. Uh, yeah, back home when you were kids, that's all mama gave us. That's all grandma gave us. You know, it was like, oh, this is great. We love that bread. It tastes good. But here's the thing. It's made with white flour. Process. And that was not going to where I, I needed to go. And it was showing. And then I wasn't craving the salad or oh. I wasn't craving just protein. I wasn't doing that. And then when I said, Schroeder, this is not you. You got to stop. Get back. And do what you need. And then when I started working out, I, I, I stopped looking for that bread. I stopped going to the store to get that bread. Thank goodness I live far away from it from the stores. <laughs> like, it takes me an hour to drive just to go and get it. I'm not willing to do that. So then I started um, buying my my veggies and fruits again. And even the fruit, it was just berries because, mm -hmm. you know, after learning more and more about fruits, I realized Russia. the berries were better for me and they had lower uh, high glycemic index. So mm -hmm. I used those. Um, I cut out all the sugar. You won't find sugar in my house. Um, then I thought, okay, I was going to be using agave nectar. And then I read, oh, that's also fructose. And I was like, okay, that's it. So now the only one I will use is maple syrup. Okay. And okay. that's it. And I recognized I felt better. And then when I started working out like the, my strict re regime, going for my six days a week, working out and then doing what I needed to do. And then back on my journal, back on my uh, gratitude and doing everything. And I was like, thank goodness. Now I would literally sit and be going like, I want a salad. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> do that before. And so now I'll buy my, my salads, I'll buy my romaine lettuce and um, get my cucumber, my tomatoes and everything and then my green apples. And then when I get home, 
before I sit, that's because I know myself, I will wash my vegetables and my fruit and then I I cut them up and put it in my salad spinner. Spin it and then when it's dry, I put it in the big, I have this huge glass container. So I put it all in there and I slice the apple and add to my salad and then I put it in the fridge. So now it's ready and available. Yes. Anytime I need it, I get it. Then I got Absolutely. my rice paper and what I did was I took some uh, the red peppers and onions and uh, my protein. I sauteed them and then I made a wrap with it because if I need to eat something extra with the salad, I made a wrap with it and then I put it in the air fryer and then I put it in the in the fridge. Ooh, so whatever, nice. yeah, I'm ready to eat. I eat that. Then in the evening, I would make just uh, my out of my turkey uh, patties or my salmon patty, and then I'll have that with uh, a salad. And by the time I'm done, I'm so full. And then somebody was telling me, "Hey, you need to incorporate yogurt into your diet. Your gut needs it." And I was like, "Okay," uh, but I don't do milk, so now I'm I'm buying um, the coconut yogurt. Oh, and perfect. Then, um, I'm having that. It took me choosing me and loving me enough to be methodical about what I wanted in my fridge, what I wanted in my body. But I also mm-hmm. recall how when my stress was at its highest, my mind couldn't go there. Do you find clients coming to you with the same issues? I have yet to have a client or prospective client that has said they wanted to sign up that didn't have a self-limiting belief or reason mm-hmm. or an excuse. What is limiting them? Um, I Again, it, I wouldn't have a job as a nurse where I work if patients didn't come in every day with the, either the same or new self-limiting belief. So I find that there is no shortage of self and now where maybe the one caveat is when you see someone similar that has been through certain life situations maybe they've encountered a coach had some type of experience now that might be slightly different for, for the most part um most i'm meeting are having have some type of self and belief yeah yeah and that's the powerful thing creating this brand and believing in it and working towards the goals that you set for yourself, not by anyone's goal, but you set for yourself. What would you say is the thing that makes you see it further than most people could even throw it? Hmm. So what really, how, like anything happens, it's a seed that got planted. So to tell that story, I got to back up slightly. It's about four or five years ago. I started watching my coach who started posting and he wasn't even really coaching. He was just talking about his life. And I found myself intrigued, not just intrigued. You've ever, sort of, I know you've followed somebody who when they speak, it speaks to your soul, your yes. conscience. Yes. Yeah. And he was, every time he did a video, you're talking to me, Wes. You ain't talking to nobody else. I don't care how many people watch it. <laughs> you're talking to me. And it happened over and over for years. In fact, it was about four and a half, five years I watched Faithful. And then I watched as he went from literally getting out of prison, sitting on a park bench to now being a multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. And it, one of the things he says is, if I can go from being a convict for 10 years in prison to coming out, changing my life through mindset to now being a multimillionaire, what's your excuse? How come you're not, how come you're not in the bed? And it stung, it hurt. And I've never met this man before. So I just realized there were things that there were seed that was planted that Mm -hmm. helped where this is at now to finally start Mm -hmm. the days where I'm pushing through fruition that I've had these. And now I've been coached up enough. I invested. I want people to invest that that you um, perfect analogy. I will ask patients, um, how many people want to win the lotto? And when it's really high, you'll be a lot of people. I want to win the lotto. The follow-up question is, did you buy a ticket? Because if you didn't buy a ticket, you're not invested. It's the same way with your mental health. You, everybody wants to change, but nobody wants to pay the price to get invested to start up. So, 
I agree. I completely agree because it has to be a complete change. Transformation. Transformation doesn't happen if we don't move. If we don't move towards what that transformation is. Even though we may not know exactly how it's going to look like, but we have some ideas. We Nobody gets ideas. the whole vision. You never get the whole vision laid out. You get one step at a time. And that's what I wake up every day knowing I got to take one step, Deshaun. Yes. The, yes. Your future you, whatever position he's in right now, is because you woke up today and took certain steps. So if you yes. don't do shit today, that's the only person you have to answer to. Yes, yes. You have to take the step because the step is what gives us the drive. Yeah. And then so, when we take the step, the strangest thing, we see the next thing. And uh, my thing is, when you're trying to climb a hill, right? If you don't take the first step, you won't see where the hill ends. So once you start taking it and moving in, you realize that more steps you take, you oh, I'm getting closer. And then when you get even higher up, you get to see all the city, all the views. But when you're not in the bottom, you haven't taken the step, you don't even know what kind of view is uh, was over there. It always looks scary from the bottom. It's supposed to. <laughs> you're right in the bottom. You're, just... you're in the bottom. <laughs> it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, see. So right. for me, that's why. And then people go, why do you just keep pushing up? And I was like, honestly, I don't want to have to regret anything. Yes. No, I do not want to ever have anything like that to say at my end stage. No, I want to say I did that. I tried that. It didn't work. I learned something from it. I tried this. Then I did this. Then I did that. But to say I didn't. No, 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 no. To me, that. No, I, I think that's what keeps me trying everything doing everything because I don't want to hear myself to ever say that because I heard someone at 88 years old and the person had regret. Mm. Yeah. Was like, not what you should be carrying at this point in your life. I can sum up what you said in a very small analogy. I seen a video, young uh, African-American gentleman, he had a tape measure, but it had numbers on it. He said, I'll use my, I'm 44. And he cut the tape measure at 44. And then he said the average African-American male lives to about 75. So we cut it at 75. And he said, that's all I got left. If I'm granted to 75 to live, I've got from 44 to 75. I don't have the time. I have to make these work. I have to do this. <laughs> there ain't no, I ain't granted anything else before. And I don't even know if I'm going to make it to 75. This is going to, and then that struck me. It was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I got 31. I can just say, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I love it. And this is very powerful. And um, I'm very excited for your journey and where you're going and how you're getting there. But I'll ask you this. This is the last question I'll ask you. Okay. Knowing what you know now and what you've been through now, if you had a chance to speak to your younger self, what advice, wisdom, and knowledge would you impart to that younger self? I would tell myself, you ended up running and you were scared of making mistakes. And that was a completely wrong mindset to have, Deshaun. Your first 20 years were based off the mistakes you were scared of making that you created in your mind that didn't even turn out and weren't real. This time you're going to stand up, you're going to face that, and you're going to take it head on like it happens and watch how things are different for you the first 20 than the next. Love it. Thank you so much. Now, how do our guests or our, our audience get in touch with you? I love, love your answer. How do people get in touch with you? Uh, right now, you can message me on Facebook, Deshaun Jackson, or you can find me on Instagram, the Psych RN Fit, P S Y C H R N F I T, the Psych RN Fit. Message me on there. Let's talk about your goals. Let's talk about your habits, those self lane beliefs. Let's get you on a team. We're um, over halfway through 2024. And if you continue, you'll head that way right through 2025. I love it. You have to come back and share with us. When are you going to write a book or are you writing right now? 
Do you want to know how we're in alignment? You know, the last thing I was going to say was sort of, I'm going to tell you and your listeners, album, movie, and book on the way. So when they get ready to make a movie, I'm going to tell them I want you back for this part specifically because this is where it blew up at. They ain't bringing anybody else to bring you in. Me and you are recreating this. (laughs) Yes, yes, because we need this type of uh, knowledge and teaching. We have a lot of young people out there who are, I call it muddling. They're spinning. Half stepping. Yes, all over. Mm -hmm. And I choose the word muddling because this book, um, there's a book by Dr. Uh, His name is uh, Masuru Imoto. He did the water. uh, It's called The Miracle of Water. And he studied the water and he realized that the thoughts we hold in our head, the self-limiting beliefs, hurts us because he did the water project. He put water in petri dishes and then spoke words like love, hate, prayer, hope, joy, faith, and left it for some time and every of course he keeps saying that to it every day to the to the various water he, he labeled them and then after a while i don't know how many months um he put them in a petri dish and they are in a petri dish already and put them in a cryogenic freezer froze them and brought them out and look at them under the microscope the shapes, the beautiful shapes of things like hope, love, prayer, gratitude, were incredible. But the ones that were being spoken hate, anger, ugly, the self-limiting words and beliefs, they were scary. Some of them looked like mud. Then he realized, wait a minute, humans, we are like 70 or 75% water. If this is the stuff we are saying to ourselves, we are muddying our waters. I like that concept. There comes our diseases. There comes the depressions. There comes the darkness. So if we are saying that just put the water in a Petri dish and it's looking like mud, what are we doing? Like that. Mm. And so that's why I call it we muddy the waters. And when young people, they're muddy in their water, they don't even know it. Um, It's, uh, I mean, I love this book. Um, and I, I usually use it in my sessions to explain to my young one, especially my teens, when they see the pictures and they see the words and they, they're like, oh. And I tell them, yes, go get the book and look at it. So next time you're telling yourself these things, these negative thoughts, this is what you're doing to yourself. Um. And it's so that's why I I want more and more young people to hear this because they can clear their own water. Absolutely. They can clear that, their own water. I also to co-sign, I try to teach my youth, they come in, I tell them, I wish I was in your position at 14 working on my mental health. To know that I would have 20 more years to invest, to pour into myself that I didn't do until way later in life, you don't realize the position you are and how far ahead you are than most of the adults that I see that didn't start doing it till later in life. Yes. And I try to drill that in. Like you're you're in a good position. You just got to realize it, perception. <laughs> yes, and I completely agree. And this is what I want people to take away from here. It's not over, no matter how bad it looks and how sad it looks, it's not over. You can always start with a new day. Move. Do something. 
but we can't sit there and say we can't because we don't have that option. Time waste for no one. Movement is life. Yes. And the one thing that's constant is change. Mm -hmm. And that change begins with you. We have to take the steps to move. And the movement, even though you don't have any answers or you know what is going on, but I assure you, the moment you move, something beautiful happens. And you find this version of yourself that you never knew even exists. And your brain, your mind will begin to look powerful to you. You'll be like, wow, I, I came up with it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are capable. We just have to believe and do move and what my brother has done is a testament to the fact that it may look like a lot of things have gone wrong but that doesn't mean he can't make the right choice for him and move and with movement he said whoa i'm something is happening internally and i'm growing I'm evolving. I like this person. Oh my goodness, where have you been? This is possible. So I assure you, come back. We need you back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, I enjoy this. Yes. We need this back. We need you back so that we can have more talks and understand that our lives are actually getting better. Now, um, thank you so much for coming and sharing your teaching, your wisdom, and of course, your experience and being so open with us. Somebody's going to listen to this and feel empowered and inspired to dream that they can also do something about their lives. They don't have to stay stagnant, they can move. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Froda. Thanks for joining us on Love, Forgive, Live Podcast. You can always email us as love, L-U-V, the number four, give, G-I-V-E, live, L-I-V-E, at Gmail dot com this is a great time to end this and say thank you we will have our guests back again thank you all right